when I joined this little group of people in a church basement in Vancouver, Canada. They were planning a protest against U.S. hydrogen bomb testing. I wanted to do something other than just study ecology, so I joined them and ended up being one of the crew members on the first Greenpeace voyage across the North Pacific to protest against the hydrogen bomb tests. Unbelievably, we succeeded in helping to overturn uh, the tests. President Nixon, at the height of the Cold War and the height of the Vietnam War in the spring of 1972, announced a, an end to the hydrogen bomb testing at Amchitka Island in the Aleutians. This, in retrospect, was a major turning point in the global arms race, and it was the birth of Greenpeace. I spent the next 15 years on the front lines in the top committee of Greenpeace around the world campaigning against nuclear testing, the slaughter of the great whales by factory whaling fleets, the uh, toxic waste emissions, uh, acid rain, and nuclear energy. Now, I, I think we got a lot of things right back in those days, but we made one mistake, and that was our total focus on nuclear war and the threat of nuclear holocaust led us to believe that all things nuclear were evil. And in retrospect, I think it makes as little sense to include nuclear energy in with nuclear weapons as it would to include nuclear medicine in with nuclear weapons. Nuclear medicine, of course, using radioactive materials that are highly dangerous if they're not used properly, successfully diagnoses and treats millions of people every year. The isotopes that are used in nuclear medicine are produced in nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors that are being used for peaceful and beneficial purposes. One principle I've come to understand is that you don't ban the beneficial uses of a technology just because that same technology can be used for evil purposes or destructive purposes. We would never have harnessed fire if we adopted that as a principle. Car bombs are made with diesel oil, fertilizer, and automobiles. Banning those three things is not the way to get rid of car bombs. In addition, you don't need a nuclear reactor to make a nuclear weapon. The proliferation argument does not really hold water in that all you need is uranium and centrifuge technology to make a bomb. There was no nuclear reactor involved in the construction of the Hiroshima bomb. It was a uranium bomb made with enrichment. It is possible to make a nuclear weapon with the plutonium that is produced in a nuclear reactor. But it is much more difficult to do it that way than it is to simply enrich uranium. So I think we need, in our minds, to separate these two things. Just talk about the safety issue for a minute, because Three Mile Island made everybody think that nuclear reactors are unsafe. When, in fact, no one was injured by the Three Mile Island accident. It was a bad mechanical failure that cost a lot of money. At least five major independent follow-up medical studies have found no evidence of any impact from Three Mile Island on the surrounding population. It is safer to work in a nuclear power plant than it is to work in either real estate or financial services, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor. Those are real statistics about time lost due to accidents on the job. No one has ever died of a radiation-related accident in the history of the U.S. nuclear industry. No member of the public has ever been injured by a nuclear reactor in the history. Yet 40,000 people die of automobile accidents every year, and people are more afraid of nuclear reactors than they are of cars. The statistics would lead you in the opposite direction. A study of 54,000 nuclear plant workers from 16 different nuclear sites, done by Columbia University, published in 2004, shows that nuclear plant workers have less cancer, less overall disease, and live longer than their equivalent cohort in the general population. It's almost as if a little bit of radiation is good for you. It is very clear that nuclear energy in the West is about the safest heavy industry we have in terms of impact. When you consider the fact that burning fossil fuels for transportation, energy, and infrastructure is the largest cause of damage to public health of anything we do in terms of respiratory effects. That is why the American Lung Association supports nuclear energy. I am all in favor of efficiency, 
please let us have a list of what we should do. Because you can't just say the word efficiency and actually accomplish anything. You have to do something in order to achieve more efficiency. Usually it involves changing technologies, such as replacing incandescent bulbs with compact fluorescent ones. I'm in total support of that. I've done it myself. But you can't just say the word efficiency. You can't just say the word conservation. We actually have to do something. And I want to see the list of what it is we should do and how much it will actually save, rather than what I, what I do see is some, some, some Greenpeace uh, study which says we can reduce our energy consumption by 50% with energy efficiency and conservation without actually telling me what it is I'm supposed to do to achieve a 50% reduction in my energy use. So I do not find that particularly credible. I'm all in favor of renewable energy. Actually, hydroelectric power produces 20% of the world's electricity, far and away the most important source of renewable electricity in the world. And yet, it is out of favor with the same people who are opposed to nuclear power, which produces 16% of the world's electricity. Between hydro and nuclear, 36% of the world's electricity is produced with clean technology hundreds of times more than is produced with any other of the renewables. So I would first ask that I support renewables. I want my colleagues in the environmental movement to support hydroelectric power and nuclear power. In the United States, for example, nuclear power already produces 70% of the non-carbon electricity. Hydro produces another 25% of the non-carbon electricity. For 95% of the non-carbon electricity in the US is produced by those two technologies. And yet they are out of favor with the mainstream environmental groups to a large degree. I think it's time that changed because they are actually the primary technologies that can reduce carbon emissions. When I hear that nuclear has no role to play in reducing carbon emissions, my reply is it already is playing the largest role in reducing carbon emissions in the United States. If that electricity was not being produced by nuclear, what would we produce it with? 